Today I'm going to share with you which shares I consider to be the best in the FTSE 100. I'm going to explain briefly, in one slide only, why the chosen company is a great investment. First up is GlaxoSmithKline, or GSK for short. This is currently my largest holding. It's a great company and thankfully for me, it is, at the time of this video, highly undervalued. Fundamentally, what we've got here is a very strong business with powerful tailwinds. GSK owns great brands such as Aquafresh, Sensodyne and Horlicks. GSK's businesses have high barriers to entry, particularly in their incredibly strong world-leading vaccines business. In vaccines, the barriers to entry are practically insurmountable for new entrants. Supported by GSK's business strength are exploitable demographics. As the world's population is growing, so is the demand for healthcare. As well as rising demand, the absolute and per capita health spend is increasing globally. A large amount of GSK's products are sold to poor countries. They lead the Access to Medicines Index. They are number one out of all of the pharmaceutical companies that are in the index for the Access to Medicines. It's a wonderful achievement. And as these countries develop, GSK can progressively increase their prices. In the future, GSK will sell more medicines to more people at higher and higher prices. The difference in price of a drug in the first and third worlds can be a factor of a hundred. GSK really has a wonderful business. Somewhat shockingly, the exact same analysis works for British American Tobacco. As much as we all hate tobacco companies, they do have wonderful businesses and have performed extraordinarily well. Tesco's gross profit margin fell to around 4%, while BATS fluctuates around 80%. You've also got a return on equity of around 50%. These numbers are insane. The explanation is the pricing power they have coupled with the fact that new competition is practically non-existent. As much as it pains me to say this, the number of smokers just isn't going down. It's actually increasing globally and quite substantially. The new smokers are poor, but they are getting richer. As they do, bats will up their prices. So, if all you're interested in is money, then bats is perfect for you. If you buy it at a reasonable valuation, you will do very well. However, you may wish to shun bats on ethical grounds, which is totally understandable. Less controversially, we have intercontinental hotels. The simple reason that this is a great investment is that growth has value because other people are principally financing the growth. Most people don't understand this concept, but you see when you have no barriers to entry or no franchise growth has no value your retained earnings simply earn the cost of capital remember growth costs money however if the number of holiday inns which is uh, IHG's leading brand increases IHG's revenues will increase but someone else will ultimately pay to build the hotel IHG's revenues, returns on equity, and capital employed are vastly higher than those of the hotel's owners. IHG will be able to take advantage of the growth of the hotel business globally in a far more profitable way than those who own the hotels due to the franchise model. The franchise model is simply brilliant, and it works so well in IHG. If you look at the number of hotels globally, um, there is substantial room for growth. If you drill down even further and you look at the number of rooms per capita, so how many rooms there are per person in a given country, you'll see that there is really a lot of growth in the global hotel market. As long as you pay a sensible price, you'll do very well as an IHG shareholder. I'm very confident that IHG, at a sensible valuation, will produce very decent returns. And finally, we have Rolls-Royce. I love this company. It's an incredible business. At the time of writing, 
it's got a massive order book which will create a steady stream of profits for the next few years. The thing you really have to know to understand Rolls-Royce is that every engine sold produces a recurring income stream that extends out for decades. This is the long-term service agreements. These arrangements are fantastic fantastically lucrative. Fortunately for Rolls-Royce, it's extremely difficult to crash their party. In the civil aerospace business, the barriers to entry are practically insurmountable. In order to enter the business, you would have to lose a fantastic amount of money starting up. You're going to have to charge less, so you'll ultimately be less profitable. This isn't a particularly compelling idea to some CEO that is looking to exercise their share options. Furthermore, consider the reputational risk associated with switching from a well-established, trusted incumbent like Rolls-Royce or GE Aviation to some upstart. Essentially, what you've got here is a business with a wide moat, with strong tailwinds behind it, and growth that has value. I would be surprised if you don't do very well owning Rolls-Royce for a decade or more. I have my own money on this. I can't get enough of Rolls-Royce shares and I'm delighted that they've been falling in value. I've been loading up on them. So there you have it. That's my opinion on what the best shares in the FTSE 100 are. I encourage you to look into these companies further. If you can invest in these companies at sensible value, then do nothing for a long time. The hardest part is the doing nothing. But if you can manage that, I consider it highly unlikely that you would lose money. However, you have to be able to stick with it. So if the stock goes down, you have to realize that fundamentally you're still in a wonderful business unless something changes and then you may have to reassess it. But don't get obsessed with the short term. Look at the fundamental strengths and the fact that these businesses have secular trends behind them that are going to drive growth. So. Hopefully you found this video interesting and thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something.